87 meters long, five masts, the Club Med 1 is the biggest sailing ship in the world. Aboard, we'll discover St. Lucia, Barbados, and the Grenadines, the most stunning archipelago of the southern Lesser Antilles. Heading due south to the starting point of our cruise, Martinique. Discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1493, did Martinique get its name from the Island of Flowers, Madinina of the Caribbean Indians, or the Island of Women, populated by fearsome Amazons? Is Martinique the Island of Flowers? Not exactly, because I think the word Madinina really means Island of Women. But there are a lot of flowers in Martinique. A more peaceful conqueror decided to tame the wild, luxuriant, evergreen tropical vegetation covering the northern part of the island at the foot of the Piton du Carbet. Why ballots are gardens? First of all, it's because I enjoy it. I wanted to plant a garden to do it for me and to do it how I wanted it. So I could only do it here where I live. I think that I also wanted to show people who come here the vegetation Martinique has. Bromeliaceus is an epiphyte that belongs to the pineapple family. It's a plant that lives on trees or roots and doesn't necessarily need roots to live, living mainly on the plant's internal water. Pandanus is a plant that comes from the Pacific and has a peculiarity. As soon as it becomes weak somewhere, it grows roots to support itself. Today is perfect weather for plants, maybe not for tourists, but for the plants it's perfect. Having said this, I find the garden much prettier in the rain, because that's when the plants are at their best. The appropriately named La Trace winds through the forest to Fort de France. At Place de la Savane, long gone are the days when beautiful women strolled about with Madras fabric skillfully wrapped around their heads. But you never know, perhaps in the marketplace. Barbadine. What is it used for? Jam and juice. You cut them in small pieces to make the jam, and for the juice you put them in a blender. So here, this is local cocoa. Over there, that's aphrodisiac ginger. These are vanilla pods used to flavor desserts. Market sounds disappear into the city's mounting hillsides. On top of Plateau Didier, magnificent homes take us back to the island's colonial past and to Victor Scholcher, whose name symbolizes the abolition of slavery.
Club Med One heads for St. Lucia. Whether it's sports or shopping, now's the time to get to know the boat. Ici, la commande des voiles. Here is the sail command. There are seven sails. That's 2,500 square meters on board. The jib's completely in front. There are five prop sails, and the main sail is in the rear. When there's enough wind blowing in the right direction, we decide which sails to unfurl. Then we raise them using automatic or computer-operated controls. Club Med One anchors in St. Lucia. Independent member state of the Commonwealth, St. Lucia reflects its French influence. People still speak Creole, and cities such as Choiseul and Castries, the capital, are named after French marshals. History, colonization, the 13,000 slaves freed in 1840, all seem like so long ago to these youngsters who romp around in the sand. Heading inland, we pass through one banana plantation after the other. Since the island no longer produces sugarcane, its economy depends entirely on bananas. Actually, on every end of, of the banana carries a, a flower, you know, and the flower is called the female organ. And then this purple hanging is called the male organ. So as the banana starts getting bigger, then the, the organ, the male organ, becomes smaller. This is of no use, right? And then the farmers go out in the field cutting them off to prevent the insects from landing on the bananas as well. Driving south, we come to Soufrière. Club Med 1, after dropping us off at Castries, now enters the bay. All seems so calm, as if time itself is stopped. Massive, imposing silhouettes of volcanic peaks seem to protect the village of Soufrière. Peaceful days go by. <laughs> okay, two on. We climb back aboard the Club Med One, hypnotized by the beauty of the landscape.
We want to thank Cruise Commander Bossard for allowing us to stay here tonight below St. Lucia's Two Peaks, a beautiful place. Ladies and gentlemen, you presently have 210 people at your service. 40 crew members, 12 of whom are officers, and 170 club med personnel, directed by Jean-Francois, our resort manager. So it's going to be the welcome drink, the commander's drink. While the party continues outside on the rear deck, artists get ready backstage. But just what kind of artists are we talking about? I'm a secretary. My name is Rachel. I'm 24 and my birthday is coming up. I give massages. I work at the boutique. I work in management. Tonight I'm dancing. Club Med 1 approaches Tobago Caves, first stop in the Grenadines. We will enter Tobago Caves through the Northwest Pass. We will anchor inside the lagoon at a tiny island, Petit Rameau. Other cruise ships our size cannot fit since their draft is too deep. I think that we are actually the biggest boat to anchor in Tobago Caves. It's one of the only places in the area where there are coral reefs creating its own kind of little lagoon, and the color of the water makes it definitely one of the prettiest parts of the Grenadines. We switch from the Club Med 1 to a beacher, which takes us directly to Petit Rameau Beach. A long time ago, English and French fought over these small reefs lost in the middle of the ocean. Today, this area is a mythical paradise for yacht lovers to drop anchor. Some of these tiny islands serve as smuggling hideouts. Two young neighboring islanders tell us about it and their job with smiling friendliness. 
That's James Bay, Kitala, Piazzi, Fidi Matnik, Kerko, Power Island, that Union. We have a finish lobster, some little t shirts, bread, bread ice, ice, everything. Red food, orange, banana. A lot of things, my friend. That's the entertainment crew, the technicians, the set people, the costume artists, sound and light. We're giving fruit out for refreshments. That's what I call being a geo. Did you catch a lot? Three barracudas, little ones, about 10 pounds each. With an energetic start on Petit Rameau Beach, the day ends calmly back on the boat. Under full sail, Club Med 1 arrives in Bakeway.
The daily ferry just arriving links Bay Quay and Smother Island, St. Vincent. Port Elizabeth is just beginning to wake up. A steel band player budges. Rasta looking fruit vendors haphazardly call out to the infrequent passerby. Then the silence, momentarily troubled, is restored. Everything seems so peaceful. But a small whale painted on a house entrance arouses our curiosity. Standing upright in the middle of palm trees, one might mistake these giant whale bones for some kind of monument. Intrigued, we decided to go back to Port Elizabeth to investigate. It's about 40 years ago, started approximately. So they still hunt whale, and they're planning to go out um, sometime. Uh, and uh, next month, maybe the early part. Soon it's still well now. We have six men in the boat, in the whale boat, and we have one man on the hill who look out to see the whales in the morning. Now, my part in the boat, when my uncle harpoons the whale, I take down the sail very fast, put the sail flat, and have it push one side. While the rope is flying very fast, the captain, he make a turn and try to stop the whale from going with the speed. There's a second harpoon, which I take the rope, from under the, the stone where we have all the, the ropes, the different ropes. After we finish killing the whale, we take the whale to Hikinibe, a small island where we flinch it up, and we divide it among the people of Bekwe. We are not doing it for money, we are just doing it because it's our tradition, and the people of our country like it, and we're going to keep it. Leaving tiny, peaceful Bakeway, dreaming of adventures of Moby Dick and Captain Akab, we continue on our way to Mustik. Barely 25 kilometers from Bakeway lies Mustik, a six square kilometer private island which belongs to Colin Tenon, Scottish aristocrat. If it weren't for the fishermen, the island would look like a movie set.
Nicknamed Millionaire Island, Mustique is proud of its celebrities. This is the Mustique Island. This island is very famous because it's very peaceful. Princess Margaret has a house here and everybody wants to have a look at Princess Margaret. And the fact Mick Jagger has a house here also and even David Bowie. Late coming fishermen. Passionate yachtsmen. Busy cruisers. The Club Med 1 leaves Mustik and heads east towards Barbados. That was Mr. Charlie who sang live for the first time. Barely arrived in Barbados, we already head back out to sea. The submarine Atlantis awaits us. We discover marine plants and animals. And a shipwreck less than 50 meters down. Was it due to a storm? Pirates? Or was the ship sunk by the powerful cannons of Her Royal Majesty? Garrison Savannah still remembers military parades. Barbados, nicknamed Little England, was ruled by the British Crown for 300 years until its independence in 1966. Beautiful colonial homes, busy shopping streets, duty-free boutiques. This is the capital city of Bridgetown. From the front, it appears British. Rastafarians, workers, exotic fruit vendors, small wooden houses, reggae, Bridgetown from behind, tropical, mindful of its African roots.
street that always stays open night after night. You call okay the red light zone, which is the ghetto, this street, or the main. You can call it the main as well. It's a street where you get a lot of action by night. Somewhere inland. An Anglican church. A few of the faithful. An old windmill. A cane field. All this is like a picture book open on the past. This is Barbados since the arrival of the first slaves from Africa in the 17th century. Barbados is a very beautiful country. It's a small island, but very friendly people. Our population here is 250,000. And the people on the island are very friendly. So if you're not sure where you're going, you can ask anyone a question, and I'm sure they'll give you directions. Beautiful Barbados. Beautiful and wild, the East Coast's powerful undertow has shaped strange sculptures. The winds of time have shifted. Old master's residences have become museums. And the old bell that once called slaves to the fields hangs still and silent. leaving Barbados to sail towards the Grenadines once again.
8 a.m. in the water sports arena at the rear of the boat. The Geo sports team get ready. Club Med 1 lays at anchor, the operation may begin. The back slowly opens up. And the pontoon opens out. But the divers don't have time to wonder about this high-tech miracle. They're already elsewhere, loading the equipment and racing away aboard hurricanes dreaming of the abyss and of mermaids. This magnificent lobster sacrificed on the altar of gastronomy is most likely to join his fellow creatures who are reluctant participants of a gigantic picnic on Maiho Beach. How many lobsters did you cook this morning? 700. Where do they come from? From all over. When we take southern cruises, we fish them out on the boat. About 50, 100 kilos, depending on the cruise. While the enchanting rhythm of the steel band plays, the hurricanes have reached their faraway diving site. The day in Myro ends. Basking in the last of the sun's rays on the back of the boat, it's time to relax. A few decks below, the cooks are busy. Fifty to twenty tons of goods per week, plus a minimum variety of dishes. Every night you have to count on about 150 dishes, and for lunch you have to count on 300, 350 different dishes. It's really building up, but for the moment we're handling the situation pretty well. We don't know how long it's going to last.
ribbon of white sand just breaks the water's surface. A deserted island decorated simply with a bouquet of palm trees. Impossible. It must be a mirage. Last night was too short. A cup of coffee and I'll feel better. Like touching a dream, we disembark onto Sandy Island. Let's be cautious. Landing in a dream is a delicate affair. Especially since other dreamers from the neighboring island of Kayaku travel the same route. Sometimes, dreams run into each other. We leave Sandy, only have we really been there? A ribbon of white sand around a bouquet of palm trees. A dream. Club Med 1 leaves the Grenadines, heading north toward Martinique. South of Martinique, in front of a beautiful beach lined with palm trees, stands the famous Rocher du Diamant. During the Napoleonic Wars, the English seized the rock and made a warship bristling with cannons out of it. They say that even today, British ships coming into its vicinity still salute. In Bellefontaine, small village on the Caribbean coast, fishermen tell tales.
My father was also a fisherman. I've been a fisherman since I was 14 and I'm 56. What do you fish here in Bellefontaine? There are gallows, that's flying fish, orphis, mackerel, sanchez, bonites, uh, let's see what else, rouge. There's also sardines, and they're really good, those sardines. How did you make that gumye? You dug out the inside of a gum tree and made the canoe out of it. So the gumye is a tree? A tree, yes. We are able to get by in a way, but living off fish, it's pretty hard. It's impossible to finish the trip without mentioning rum and sugarcane, since it and Martinique are one and the same. Nested in the middle of Martinique's beautiful hilly countryside, we discover the Acajou Domaine, where the grand tradition of straight agricultural rum is carried on. You are at the Clément residence. The house is 18th century and was entirely refurnished and renovated. All the furniture is made of tropical wood, core berry and acajou. Acajou is mahogany. Old Clément rum is very renowned. It's one of Martinique's prime rums, which makes it one of the best old rums in the world. The advantage of rum is that you don't get cirrhosis if you drink too much, but it mainly makes you voluble and very happy. It's a party alcohol, one for joyous occasions. Fort of France's port, the party continues late into the night. A new trip begins. At sunrise, the Club Med 1 will reach new shores. Mm -hmm. 